Hello everybody. Let's take a look at a projectile motion problem or a two-dimensional motion problem. Uh, as we're doing these, we need to keep in mind that even on the two-dimensional problems, they, we really treat them like one-dimensional problems, at least for any individual step. So a lot of this is going to look familiar like, um, like it's just the same stuff we did with the one-dimensional kinematics equation. All we're really adding is a little bit of vector stuff in there as well. So for this situation, we've got a cannonball that's fired from the ground. It's going to land on the ground sometime later, some distance away. And it's that distance that we're trying to figure out here. In general on these, I think a good place to start is to make a diagram of the situation. So now we can kind of see what, uh, what's basically going on here. Um, we have the cannonball moving from left to right in the way that I've drawn this picture. But you might have yours in um, the opposite direction, and that's fine. Uh, it's going to go up to some high point and then fall back down. It's traveling along a parabolic curve. All projectile motion is going to be along a parabola. I also think it's useful to include some of the given information on, uh, on the diagram itself. So, for instance, I would write that uh, this bowling ball is initially traveling at 120 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above horizontal. And uh, the fact that we're looking for this distance here from the ball, uh, where the ball is launched, to, to where it hits the ground. Now, my diagram doesn't really show it this way, but it says in the problem that the cannonball is fired from the ground. And we know that it's going to, uh, uh, to land on the ground, though it looks like that part of my text has been cut off. Um, how far from the cannon does the ball land? Uh, so that's, that's an important point to keep in mind as well. Next step, we'll write out that list of variables that we might know something about or might be asked to find and start filling those values in. With projectiles, we are going to treat these as though the only force acting on this thing as it moves through the air is gravity, which is going to tend to pull these downward and make them accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared uh, downward. And I'm going to say that up is positive and down is negative here. Um, since there's no force then that acts in the x direction, I can say that the acceleration in the x is zero. I'm also not given a coordinate system to use, so I can just pick which system I want to use. I'll say that the origin for my coordinate system is right at that cannon. And I guess I should have been a little more careful to, uh, um, to have this down like that. There we go. Uh, so I'll say that, it, uh, that our cannonball starts at a position of 0, 0, and we're looking for this distance x. Now the velocity initial is 120 meters per second at 30 degrees above horizontal, but I don't have a place for the overall velocity, only for the x part of it and the y part of it. So before I can do anything with this, I need to figure out out of that 120 meters per second, um, how much of that velocity is in the x direction and how much of it is in the y direction. This is just vector resolution as we did with vectors. Uh, so I have this velocity at 30 degrees. I need to find the x and the y components, the perpendicular components of that velocity, which I can do with some trig. So I use sine of 30 degrees equals v naught y over 120. And from that, I can figure out since sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, that v naught y is 60 meters per second. And cosine of 30 degrees equals v naught x over 120. Multiply both sides by the 120 and find that the v naught x is 103.9 meters per second. So then those values I can fill in in my table, 60 meters per second and 103.9 meters per second. At this point, we know some of the, uh, uh, the variables here. And we know that we're looking for the x final position. So you might look at this then and say, oh, OK, let's try some of these kinematics equations. We'll do the x direction, since that's what we're looking for. Um, and we'll see what we can get. The equation you'd probably try first would be this one, which doesn't have a t in it, which is good for us, since we don't know what t is. And when we plug in values here, we end up with an answer of 109, uh, sorry, 103.9 meters per second squared equals 103.9 meters per second squared 
plus zero. Essentially, this is one equals one, which is a true statement, but not at all useful for us. Uh, if you try anything else in the x direction, you'll find that uh, you can't solve because we don't know t. So that tells me that uh, my first step probably is going to be solving for t. But I can't do that in the x direction, it looks like. I don't have enough information to do that yet. So let's try it then in the y direction. In the y direction, this equation makes the most sense. We are looking for t. We know the starting uh, and ending positions for y. We know the starting velocity and we know the acceleration. So we can plug into this equation and solve for t. Um, now this one, it might be useful to begin by putting in those zeros. Uh, because that's going to simplify our algebra. So I'll make both of these uh, 0, and then I have 0 equals, I'll factor out a t here, v not y plus 1 half a t is what I'm left with. So by the zero product rule here, I know that um, these sit the situation is met either when time t is 0, or when v not y plus one half a t is zero. Well, I knew that it was at a position zero, zero when time was zero. That one isn't useful for me. So I'm gonna focus on the zero equals v not y plus one half a t. And then I'll rearrange this one to get, uh, let's see, subtract v not y from both sides plus one half a t. And I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide by a. So negative 2 v naught y over a is equal to t. That's negative 2 times our starting velocity in the y is 60 meters per second. Uh, no squared there. 60 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared is equal to our time. And that's going to give us a value of 12.2 seconds is equal to t. And I'll go ahead and add that to my table here I'm using red just to remind myself that there was something I calculated. So if I get a, a wrong answer for um, something else in here using time, I'll know that I need to go back and check my work. Now that I've got t, I know everything in the x direction except for that final x position. So let's try and solve for that using an equation that has t in it. And so the only equation that has t in it and has that x that we're looking for would be x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a uh, it's v naught x ax t squared. Um, here acceleration in the x direction is zero as is our starting x position. So x is going to be equal to v naught x times t. In this case, that would be the 103.9 meters per second times 12.2 seconds. And so x is 1,272 meters. And so I'll go back to uh, the, the question as it was originally written, which was, how far from the cannon does the cannonball land? And write my answer, the ball lands 1,272 meters from the cannon.